it's Kelly Russell, the Rock Your Joy coach. Thank you so much for being here today. I am so excited to be with you. This is from crappy to happy, learning how to have happy relationships. So, you know, this is this is just a, a topic that if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, or if I can get anybody to stand still long enough, this is usually what I'm talking about. So if, if for those of you who might not know me, I am a teacher of A Course in Miracles, a spiritual educator. I am a, a happiness coach and also a clinical psychotherapist. And so my jam is relationships. And it's not relationships like couples therapy relationships. Um, it's more about helping people to do what they need to do within their own minds and work with their their own selves. And in doing that in bringing about the change of mind that needs to happen and uh, the healing of their their beliefs that we all are dragging around, um, that is really what the secret is to happy relationships. So before I get into the material, I just wanna I wanna make sure that you can hear me. I wanna so if you're if you're watching, if you can just uh, put a comment in the chat that you know you're here, say where you're from, and that you can hear what I'm saying. And I'm so happy to be talking to you today. So, um, all right. And hello, Amy in North Carolina. So happy you can hear me. And hello. Um, yes. Okay, good. Wonderful. So, you know, relationships, right? I mean, we're all, we're all if, you, if you're around here long enough, you're going to be in some kind of a relationship, right? I mean, you're born into a family, so you got that whole relationship, you know, cluster happening. And then, you know, you get your friends, you go to school, you have eventually you grow up, you have, you might be on teams, you get a job, you have all your coworkers, you're in relationships, uh, dating, and you, uh, you've got your relationships that your familiar relationships that you'll have throughout your life, your, your parents, your siblings and whomever, your friends and so on and so on. So there are just relationships everywhere. You kind of really can't get away from them. And it is the thing that I hear about more from people in all both my psychotherapy practice and my coaching that I hear about more than anything else is people having difficulty in their relationships. And what I hear a whole lot is wanting other people to change and be different. And, you know, I mean, if I had the secret to how to do that, <laughs> trust me, I would have changed everybody in my life and probably retired as a billionaire by this point. Um, but I don't. And the reason for that is because it's not our job or our place or our right to change anybody else. It's what we have to work with is creating our own reality with our own thoughts. That's really how it works. And so it, it sort of doesn't matter what anybody else is doing because that what they're doing is responding to and reflecting our own thoughts. So there's a passage in A Course in Miracles that says, I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience and I decide upon the goal I would achieve and everything that seems to happen to me, I have asked for and receive as I have asked. And that passage, there was a time when that passage used to just like was nails on a chalkboard for, for me because I felt like I didn't ask for what I was what I was seeing and what I was getting in relationships. So I, there have been times over my life when I have been in serious conflict in relationships with with partners, with former husbands, 
with my sister, my father, my best friend, my boss. <laughs> and it's, yeah, I like to think that I'm not, you know, a, a terrible to get along with. I think that it isn't really that. It's more that I would find myself in some kind of conflict or argument or, you know, disagreement or whatever. And I believed that the other person was wrong and that I was right. I believed that it was my job to convince them. I believed that we had to agree. And I believed that everything that had to do with the conflict that we were experiencing together was outside of me and and probably belonged to them, but definitely outside of me. And in being a Course in Miracles student, what I have realized and recognized and just, you know, has come right up in my face, but I've really been able to embrace it, that everything is coming from my own thoughts. And I know that that probably seems a little hard for people to get their heads around, especially when 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 it when you just don't you don't see the relationship between well how can that be happening I'm you know I'm having this experience I'm having that experience I'm not thinking about that so how is that happening and so rather than trying to go down that rabbit hole and convince you I which I don't really want to do I can say that one of the easiest ways to see this happening in action is it's the meaning that we make out of whatever appears to be happening in our lives. And so we have choices as to how we can respond to something. We have choices as to the story that we tell ourselves about whatever seems to be going on. And that is really, you know, when you study psychology, what you learn is that the way that we create a story and the way that we make meaning of something and then ultimately the way that we emotionally respond to it is something happens somebody says something somebody does something or somebody doesn't say or do something that you wanted them to that is what we would call like the stimulus that's the thing that happens and then we have a thought about it and we may have a negative thought about it, a judgmental thought about it. We may think, well, that's wrong, or you shouldn't have done that, or you, or you should have done that and you didn't. And as, as soon as we have a couple of thoughts, you know, there'll be another thought that comes along that's similar to that. Well, you must not have done that because you don't care about me. Or you must have done that because you don't care about me. And you don't care about me and maybe you've never cared about me. And maybe, maybe this whole thing was just a charade. And maybe I can't even trust you now with anything you say, because I don't even know if you ever cared about me. And I don't even know if everything you said is a lie. And so do you see how with like four sentences, we can go from somebody saying something and we don't know what it meant. We don't know what their intention was. We don't know what was behind it. We don't know what kind of day they're having. We don't know what kind of baggage they're carrying around. We don't know what their internal monologue is. We don't know anything. But yet we are going to treat our inner story about it, our making a meaning out of it with our thoughts as if it is complete and total fact which it isn't. And so then the next thing that happens is that we've we've got these thoughts that we're having. Now we've got a, this story going and that is what stimulates our, our emotions, our feelings, especially when they're negative, then our, our central nervous system gets involved. And I'm sure you've heard of the fight or flight response. So our, and it's actually fight or flight or freeze or fawn, um, sort of expanded in the last, you know, several years. And so that is what causes our emotional reaction to kick in. And once our emotional reaction is, is kicked in, now the story has color and it's powerful and, and it's, you know, now it's a drama to us because now our emotions are involved. And so 
This all happens in a, in a manner of like nanoseconds. And if we are not conscious and we're not tuned in and paying attention to what we're feeling, we can go from zero to 60 in just like that. And now we are, we're not responding and we're not, we're not, as soon as our central nervous system gets involved, we are not even operating in our prefrontal cortex, our front frontal lobe of the brain, not even in it. Nope. We're in like back in like the ancient brain somewhere or like lizard brain, like having a fight or flight response where we want to either kick the person's ass or we want to run away and never see them again. And those are kind of like the two major options, you know, fight or flight. And so we're out of our ability to reason. And that is really how a lot of this, how a lot of this like conflict and story and drama gets gets caused. This is literally how we create our own reality. It is with the thoughts we have. So when we think about the thoughts we have, it's not just about the thoughts that we have going on about what somebody said or did, like in the moment, because what is informing and feeding our response and those, those thoughts that we have in the first place is all the baggage that we're carrying around, all of the underlying beliefs that we have about ourselves, all of the feelings that maybe we're not good enough, or we're not deserving, or we're not worthy. You know, we may have been carrying unhelpful, self-limiting beliefs around since we were children. And it's nobody's fault, you know, nobody, nobody means to mess us up like that. Nobody, you know, it's, it's, it's nobody else's responsibility. It's just ours to examine what are our underlying thoughts. And if we are Course in Miracles students, as I am a Course in Miracles teacher, and that's the platform from which I, I teach everything, then the Course in Miracles teaches us that we are all walking around with an underlying belief that we are guilty. And it's not true, but, you know, just like anything, the truth really kind of doesn't matter as much as what, what our belief of the truth is, what our perception of the truth is, because that's what we're always responding to. We're very rarely are we ever responding to the truth about anything. We are always responding to our own perception of what we think the truth is. And this is part of the problem when we get into disagreements and arguments with people is that we're coming from different perceptions and trying to convince one another of what the truth really is. You know, I'm right, no, I'm right. And I want you to agree with me. And so, you know, I'm gonna make you wrong and talk to you until you either agree with me or you run screaming into the night or, you know, whatever it is. So right there is where the cause is, is that we believe we are guilty. And why do we believe we're guilty? We believe we're guilty because we believe we have separated from God or whatever, whatever word you have for it. We believe we have separated from the divinity that we come from, from the creator, from the universal intelligence, from source. You know, there's many words for it. It doesn't matter because they're all the same in that that aspect of the divine that we are a part of that is perfect love really that is the to me that's the most universal term for it is that we are we are created by perfect love of perfect love for perfect love and perfect love is all we really are at our core and then we have this little part of our minds. I, I, you know, the Course in Miracles refers to it as the ego mind. I sometimes talk about it in a different term terminology and call it the conditioned self. But either way, it's the aspect of us that has been conditioned by fear, conditioned to think with fear rather than love. And so when we when we think with fear, we have our guard up. We 
we when we think with fear, we believe all that all that BS that we are guilty. We believe we have shame, we have unworthiness, we think we're not good enough, we think we're not deserving. And, and so we carry all this around as our baseline. And so we think that someone else needs to fix that for us, that somebody else needs to needs to help us believe. Like if you, if you will see me as awesome and you will see me as wonderful and beautiful and perfect and amazing, then I can maybe I can love myself because I can see myself reflected in your eyes. And so the only way I can really feel good about myself is if you feel good about me. And so then we we become people pleasers, right? That's another thing that I hear a lot from people in my practices. Um, that they're that they're constantly focused on other people and pleasing other people and making sure other people are happy with them. And why is that? It's because we have this need to be seen, to be accepted and and to be loved and taken care of and not abandoned. And so I need to make sure that, you're all good with me and that you're happy with me and that I'm doing as much as I can to make you love me so that you, so that you will, and so that you won't leave me and so that I can feel worthy and deserving. It's a huge setup, you guys. I mean, first of all, divorce, you know, over 50% of marriages end in divorce. They don't fail. They just end in divorce. Two people decide that they don't want to be married anymore. That's that's what divorce is. But what it means is that, you know, even if you're you get married, it doesn't mean that you've now got this person that's going to make you feel loved for the rest of your life. Because the truth is, whatever relationship it is, whether it is a spousal or partnership relationship, whether it's a relationship you have with your kids or your parents, your friends, your coworkers, people in your community, whatever it is, that's conditional love. That is bargaining love. When the truth is, what real love is, is loving everyone. It's loving yourself. It's loving the other person. And it is, but it is not depending on the other person for your happiness or depending on them agreeing with you so that you can be okay, or even depending on them liking you or loving you. It's you making the decision that both you and the other person come from the same source of perfect love. And because you come from the source of perfect love, you are at your core perfect love. And anything that is appearing to not be perfect love is simply an erroneous belief about yourself or about the other person. We are all interconnected as one being, as one, as A Course in Miracles teaches, we are all one child of the creator, one extension of love, where there's no way of separating us, not from the creator, and there's no way of separating us from each other. And so where we get into trouble and where we get into relational conflict is when we believe that we are separate that we are separate from the other person. And it looks like we are because we're in separate bodies and we have separate identities and separate, you know, unique characteristics and qualities. And, you know, but the, the biggest piece of it is that we're in, we're in separate bodies. And so therefore we think we're completely separate, but we're not, we're actually, our minds are all joined. And so one of the one of the reasons why we get into conflict with people is because we think that they don't know what we're thinking or that we don't you know that that we can just keep our thoughts inside our bubble and nobody will know kind of the thoughts that we're harboring about them but the truth is energetically our thoughts travel, we're transmitting all the time. And so you have to think about what are you transmitting? If, you know, what I look back and see the conflict that I was having with people in various people in my life, I had divorces, I had estrangements, I had, you know, just, just rocky, rocky relationships. And um, all of them are not, were not only because I had uh 
expectations that other people needed to do this or that so that I could feel worthy and loved and deserving. But also, I didn't have that understanding that my thoughts energetically were traveling. And so I could be harboring some pretty crappy thoughts about the various people that I was involved with, thinking that they couldn't feel them. And you know what? They can. People can feel the energy with which you are thinking about them. And so, you know, the the things that can really transform your relationships with people, um, no matter who they're with, it's, as I said, it's not just partnerships, it's anyone. It is you looking at how do you regard yourself how are you thinking about yourself? That is the first thing to think about because how we think about ourselves is what we project into the world. And so remember a little while ago when I told you that A Course in Miracles teaches us that we are all harboring this unconscious guilt, that we believe we've separated from God and that honestly, we believe we carry around the kind of guilt that is like shame, like the lowest calibrating emotion that there is like feeling like not that that doesn't just make us not good enough it really makes us unworthy of love we think that we have rejected love we think we have rejected the greatest love that we could ever feel which is the love of the divine the love of of our creator or our source we believe that we have rejected that. And so when we think we have rejected that love, that guilt and that shame feels so terrible to us that we can't stand it. We literally can't stand the guilt. We have to get away from it. And so what do we do? We project it. It's another psychological term. Of course, miracles is, is totally a, a spiritual psychology. It's one of the reasons why I love it so much. And we, so we project that onto other people and we say, I'm not guilty. You are. And so it's one of the reasons why we are so quick to find fault with other people is that we we need to see them as being guilty rather than ourselves. We need to see them at fault rather than seeing ourselves. Instead of saying, nobody's at fault, nobody's separated from love, nobody's separated from the creator, that's preposterous. We could never do that. It would never happen. It isn't possible. And so we're all innocent. And we might just temporarily be not knowing who we are right now. We might just, you know, ha being having a, a temporary obstacle to being remembering the truth of ourselves, remembering our innocence, remembering our light, remembering our beauty. But when we can remember that, and one of the ways that you reconnect with your own self love, what probably the best way that you connect with your own self love is to see it in your brother. And when I say brother, I mean, we are all joined and we are all brothers. So we all are, you know, we've all, we all have the same source, the same creator, the same love, God, divine, however you call it, which makes us all brothers, or if you prefer sisters, it doesn't matter because there's no gender in spirit. So it's just, a, it's just a way of speaking to it without calling everything it. <laughs> um, so when we can see our brother as innocent, when we can let things go, that is that is the most powerful thing you can do to reduce conflict in a relationship and to, to restore goodwill and to repair whatever injury has gone on is to be able to, first of all, let go of whatever it is that you think you can't let go of, whatever it is you're carrying, whatever argument, whatever, you know, blame or responsibility that you're setting at, at the other person's feet. Some of these things go on for decades, for lifetimes, you know, they did this to me or they did that to me, or, you know, they, 
abused me or they abandoned me or they didn't love me enough or they cheated on me or whatever it was, but letting go, whether you are in an active relationship with a person, by the way, or not, whether their body has made its transition from this world or not, you know, one of, one of my most incredibly successful um, relationship repairs and, and, you know, sort of getting back together was with my father. And it was all done after he made his transition. And yet I, I harbored nothing but love for him now. And I'm so grateful that he was my dad. And I wasn't talking like that when he was alive in the world. So it really is amazing what can happen when you make the decision and it is your decision. There's nothing holding you back from, from forgiving anyone. There's nothing holding anyone in your contempt or in your criticism or, you know, in your hating on or whatever it is, except your, your desire to be mad your desire to make them guilty and to not let them off the hook. But that is how you create your own reality because there is no way that you can be harboring resentment and anger and being pissed off and carrying guilt around inside yourself and then projecting it onto another person. There's no way that you can do that and be peaceful inside yourself. There's no way that you can truly project it and get rid of it. It's like holding another pe person imprisoned, right? In the prison of your, your guilt and your thinking that they done you wrong and whatever it was, when you hold another person in prison like that so that they can't get out and they have to be punished for what they did and they have to do their time and you've sentenced them then you're the jailer. So guess where you are? You're in the freaking prison too. Okay. So nobody's out in the light. Nobody's free. And, and you're holding both of you there. And a lot of times, actually, you think you're holding the other person there, but they're not being held there. You're the one that's suffering and they're having a great time. So being able to let go of whatever resentment you have, recognize that this person, whatever you think of them, are actually exactly like you in terms of they are a creation of the divine. They are 100% love, just like you are, and they are just temporarily responding to an erroneous belief, an erroneous belief in fear, the conditioned self, the ego mind, and you are responding to that too if you're holding anything against them and not seeing them through the eyes of love. So that is the short story of how we create our own reality. And the longer story, if you're interested, I'm going to switch tracks here for a second, that I have a brand new digital program that I am like beyond excited about. I am, I, it's the first digital program that I've had and I am, I'm launching it this very day and it is called Creating Miraculous Relationships, Rocking Big Ass Love with Others, Yourself and God. And this program goes into much more depth. It's a way deeper dive than what I'm talking about here. But what I've talked about here is part of it. Um, you know, you can't really have a happy relationship with someone else without having a happy relationship with yourself and a happy relationship with whatever your per perception of the divine is. It, as I said before, it doesn't matter what you call it. It doesn't matter whether it is something that is organized in terms of religion or whether it's just between you and whatever your belief is, um, the, the, the source, the divine intelligence, the God of your understanding, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But if you don't have some kind of relationship with that greater aspect of you, the broader perspective, the, the from where you came, 
the 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 source of who you are you're an extension so if you're the wave then the source is the ocean if you're the ray then the source is the sun you're not the sun you're not the ocean but if you're if you're if if source or or the divine is the ocean and you take a bucket and scoop it out and you analyze the ocean and you analyze what's in the bucket they're exactly the same the same thing if you were to analyze a ray of the sun and the sun itself it's the same so there's no difference between us and the creator in terms of what we are made of we are pure love we are pure light we are innocent we are divine just as god is but we did not create god god created us so that's the big difference but we don't think that we have been taught by whatever we've been taught by by religion maybe by families or cultures we've been taught by the world various things but we're not taught that we are perfect love we're usually taught that perfect love is reserved for the divine, which is somewhere up here, and then we're somewhere down here. And, and whether we've been taught that we're guilty sinners or we have this original sin where we're just born sinful or whether we are, you know, working on it all through all of our lives or whatever it is. It, we're taught that it's somehow separate from us, and that could not be further from the truth. So part of this program that I'm introducing um, this week is one of the one of the aspects of creating really miraculous relationships is developing the relationship that you have with the divine. And so I talk about that a lot. I go into to depth with it as how do we do that? And and, you know, what does that look like? And how are we doing with it right now? You know, I, I, I used to say before I had a relationship, what, you know, a, like a close everyday talk to all the time and, and listen to and all that relationship with God, I used to sort of think about it the same way, kind of like, you know, I was raised in a unity church, so I did grow up with a lot of that sort of God is within you idea, but I think I still kind of felt that it was outside of me somehow and that I didn't really have access to it and nothing could be further from the truth. So this, this creating miraculous relationships goes into how to cultivate the relationship with the divine so that you really feel it and you really benefit from it. And it is something that you draw strength from and guidance from, and it's a daily thing. So that's part of it. And another part of it is having relationships with other people, which I talked about a little bit earlier in the, in the from crappy to happy piece of the <laughs> piece of this um, teaching. But it is how do you how do you really cultivate the relationship with another person so that it is a holy relationship and i don't mean holy like religious i don't mean it in that term i mean a holy relationship where you are really connected with the divine and the other person as i talked about before how to get to that place where you're seeing the light in them you're seeing the love in um, in them so that you can see it in yourself. And so we go into a deep dive there of how to cultivate the relationship with the other person. And again, no matter who it is. Um, and then the, the last aspect of it is cultivating the relationship with yourself. Because as I said before, if you don't have a relationship with yourself, if you don't love yourself, you, you can't really fully love another person and you can't fully accept another person's love for you because you'll be harboring this idea within yourself that you're not worthy of it, that you don't deserve it, that that there's something wrong with you, that you're you're carrying the guilt around, remember. And so if you don't think you're worthy of love, you will not be able to receive it and you will eventually do something to F up your relationship, to sabotage it 
and to to sort of prove to the other person and and then to yourself that you know see I wasn't you know I'm not lovable anyway and I got rejected or I got abandoned or they left me or whatever it was we're doing all of that we are the director of this whole symphony we are the director of this whole play and you know it's like i talked about with the quote from the course of miracles in the very beginning that you know we decide on the goal that we would have wanted or unwanted consciously wanted or unwanted we decide by what we put our focus on. So if we are looking at the world through the eyes of fear, then we are going to create relationships in which fearful things happen and we get fearful outcomes and we are treated in a way that we are afraid of and then we don't trust and we don't wanna get into another relationship because I got treated this way or that way by the last one. But remember, we're it's where we're locating ourselves. It's what we expect. It is what we are focusing on. So if we are keeping our thoughts focused on anything other than what we want, we're always creating. Our thoughts are always creating. That's we are creative beings. We as as part of that being exactly the same as the divine is our ability to create. We are a divine idea. We are a thought in the mind of God. We are a creation of God that was created by an extension of love by the thought of God. And we create everything else the same way. So if we are holding anything in our awareness that is doesn't feel good to us, we need to transform that ASAP. Because if we don't, we are going to literally create it as our experience in the world. And then we're going to look at it and be like, well, why did that happen to me? And I didn't deserve that. And I didn't want that. And I didn't ask for it. You may not have asked for it by sitting down and you're writing in your journal. I would like to have a crappy relationship. or I would like to have somebody abandon me or cheat on me or leave me. Or I would like to get into a big fight with my best friend. Or I would like to have my kid, you know, reject me or like whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, we're normally not saying things straight up like that. But we don't often see the relationship between what we're thinking in our minds, like I was talking about before, like, you know, keeping things in your bubble. It's not just keeping thoughts about other people in our bubble. It's keeping thoughts about what we want. And so if we have self-negating thoughts, oh, I'd really like to have a happy relationship, but none of my relationships have ever been happy and everybody's always left me and everybody's, you know, that guy cheated on me or this chick turn out to be a raving lunatic or whatever it is. So where's the focus then? One second of it was on, I'd like to have a happy relationship. And the rest of the focus is on all the bad stuff that ever happened. And so if you're, you're weighing it out, you are literally in the process of creating what you don't want. And one of the best barometers to know what you are in the process of creating right now is how do you feel? How do you feel right now? When you think about whatever it is you're thinking about, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel shitty or does it make you feel great? Does it make you feel hopeful and excited and looking towards the future? And I can't wait for it to get here. And maybe it's going to be the next person that I meet or I'm going to have this amazing experience or my life is, um, you know, getting more and more abundant every day. Or do you tell yourself the sad story of how it is right now? Because Whatever you're telling yourself about how it is right now, it's going to continue to be how it is right now until you change the way you're thinking about it. So, so that's the aspect that we go deeply into in terms of your relationship with yourself. And so, and then we pull it all together in, in this sort of synergy of it takes all three of those aspects to be in balance and to be in alignment with love in order for you to truly have miraculous relationships. And you can, and I am living proof of that. Whether whether I talk about my relationship with my beloved partner, which is going to be 11 years this very month of love, February. I love February so much because it's Valentine's, it's Valentine's, um, month and it's my anniversary month and I have the best partner in the universe and but it was a 
it was a growing into it process for me to recognize that I was worthy of that relationship and for me to be able to feel uh, confident about it and to be able to allow all of the wondrous gifts that come to me from this man and from, you know, every single day, I had to develop the relationship with the divine, I had to develop the relationship with myself. And I had to stop sabotaging it and stop uh, thinking that this relationship was going to turn into other relationships that I had had in the past. So it's, it's a process and you're the one doing the work, but if you do the work, it will work. So I can't say enough about it. I hope you join it. There's, there is a, a link for you to follow in the chat and there'll be, I think there'll be a link on the screen as well. Um, and right now, this um, because it is launch week. So for this week, starting today and through uh, Valentine's Day, um, which is again, it's just the, I love the fact that it's a whole day devoted to love. And yes, we should be we should be expressing and thinking about and talking about love every day. Yes, I get that, but you know what? We don't. But on Valentine's Day, we do, and so I'm for it. I don't just think it's a hallmark holiday. I think it's a day for us to think about love and then to hold on to that as long as we can. So um, so I am offering this program, which is normally $333, and I'm offering it at a 66% discount. So it's being offered right now at 111. And that's for that goes for right now through Valentine's Day. And so I, I really hope you will join me there. And if you do, so for the people who enroll in that program, Creating Miraculous Relationships, Rocking Big Ass Love with Others, Yourself, and God, for this enrollment period, this launch period that goes through Valentine's Day, um, not only will you be getting a 66% discount, which is, you know, I don't know, I think that that's a pretty good discount, but you also will be getting a bonus of four weeks of live group coaching with me, course specific, so specific to this course, um, four coaching calls that are going to be group coaching. They're going to be on Tuesdays beginning on the, I believe it's the 20th, yeah, February 20th uh, at 6 p.m. And those calls are going to be for an hour. And so you show up to the call and I will coach you in whatever you've got going on that has to do with this course. So I'm really excited about that. I'm so, I'm, you know, I'm just so geeked about this whole thing. I, I'm, I, I love teaching. I loved, I'm so passionate about this. And partly the reason is because it has worked unbelievably in my life. And I can tell you that even though I've had all the conflict in my life that I talked about in the early part of this, um, of this meeting, I don't have conflict with anybody in my life now. And it's just, full of love and I couldn't be more grateful and more appreciative. So I want to be able to share that with you and, and, you know, teach you what I've learned over my 22 or 23 years of being a Course in Miracles student and, and putting into effect what it teaches and really learning that I am, I am love. And so is everybody else. I am innocent. And so is everybody else and I'm worthy. And so is everybody else. So I um, so I hope you will join me there and I hope to see you. And so now um, I just uh, I want to remind you again that the link to join is in the chat. And also um, there's a link on the screen. And I just want to open it up for if anybody's got any questions that you would like to ask me, I would love to uh, love to answer any questions that you might have about anything we've talked about tonight or anything um, about the upcoming course or or whatever. So don't be shy. If you have a question, feel free to type it in the comments. And until, unless and until there is a question, I'm just going to talk a little bit more <laughs> and just to, just to see if anybody wants to ask me anything. 
Um, so I will, you know, in, in terms of what we were talking about tonight and the, you know, from, from crappy to happy and creating, you know, how to create happy relationships. Um, I can just, I can remember feeling so frustrated. And I think that that's one of the things that I hear from people a lot is feeling frustrated and feeling like they're not being heard and that they need to be able to explain how they feel and they need the other person to to listen to them and to take it in and and that they have this and and I can remember that I can remember sitting and being in tears in and these would be in uh, partnership relationships that I had because I felt so frustrated that we were not communicating and, and we weren't communicating correctly. I couldn't get my point across. They couldn't get their point across. It would just, it, we would just inflame each other. Um, and so I, I will tell you that you don't have to communicate person to person that doing this work internally will do that for you. So loves to run. I recognize you loves to run from my YouTube channel. Um, so, okay, I want to take the course, but I'm afraid to try again. I make progress and then I get frustrated and I give up. Okay, so I hear you saying that you're, you're afraid that you're going to give up. <laughs> and I And so I can tell you that the part of you that gives up is not your authentic self. It's not the truth of who you are. The part of you that gives up. So this is, I love this question because this, you're bringing up a really good point in that there is a, I like to think of it, you know, I, I talked before about the Course in Miracles calls it the ego mind. I will call it the ego mind, but also the conditioned self, that aspect of us that is always coming from fear and that in really kind of in simplistic terms, wants to be the boss of us. It wants to be in control of our minds. And if it's in control of our minds, then it can basically kind of, you know, like control our very, our very experience of life. And if we're coming at everything from fear, then everything is going to be an experience that's going to be fraught with anxiety and catastrophic thinking and what if this happens and what if that happens and what if this person leaves and what if I don't have anybody and what if I'm lonely and what if and it's a terrible way to live okay so the conditioned self is always trying to get us to think fearfully about anything and so when you say that that you know I'm afraid to try again I make progress and then I get frustrated and I give up that's because you're listening to the wrong teacher in your mind you're listening to your conditioned self and so one of the things that this course can do for you is teach you how to listen to the to the voice in your mind that is actually the more the still small voice not the louder voice the the ego mind the conditioned self is the louder voice in our minds the fear voice the still small voice is actually the voice of our authentic self. It's the voice of spirit that is within us, that's with us all the time, that's guiding us all the time. It's like an inner GPS, but we have to tune into it. And that is part of in this course, what I talk about, but there's a part of this course that are tools and practices that are, that are designed and that I use myself all the time to keep me in that place of being guided every single day and learning how to cultivate listening to that voice of guidance, that voice for God, or however you want to call whatever it is that is always guiding you from a place of love. It's always guiding you and your decisions so that they will not only be for your highest good, but they will be the decisions that are for the highest good of all concerned. And we can't know that at this level. That's why the guidance is required. Because at this level, we can see this teeny, teeny, teeny little part of reality, but we blow it up into, into what we think is, is, what, is, is what reality really is. And then, so we think we know what should happen at any given time, but we really don't. We don't have any idea. And so when we can give up on that, we're actually much better off. And so when people say, you know, Jesus is my co-pilot or whatever. I'm like, how about like, let 
the divine drive, let your inner guide drive and you can be in the passenger seat, you know, and you can just like follow that guidance, follow that GPS. And I, I hear it all the time in my mind, but it's a, it's a way of cultivating it. So you're not going to lose anything loves to run by taking the course. You are going to add to your, to your toolbox, to what you have already been doing, whatever you've already been doing that has been working, you're going to add to that with all kinds of things that will be helpful to you in your relationships. And you will learn some of the things that you might have been doing that were actually detrimental and destructive to your relationships. So yeah, I hope you do join me. Thank you. Anybody else have question or Anything I can help clarify for you? I'm I'm just I'm so excited about this program. I can't even tell you. I I have been wanting to create a, a course for a long time. And I, you know, this was an area where where fear just overtook me and I just couldn't make it happen. And there is um there's an angel on the back end of this broadcast that you can't see her, but her name's Amy, Amy Star Allen. And she is, she is my, I, I say I'm birthing this course and I call her my, my midwife of it, my Rock Your Joy midwife. And you can say hi to Amy and she has helped to make um, all of this so possible for me. So I'm so grateful. She's one of my holy relationships. So well, so it looks like I'm not going to get any more questions. And so I just, again, I want to say thank you so much for, for joining me. Love, oh, love is real. Absolutely. Jessica, thank you so much. It's good to see you here. And um, I love you. I love all of you guys. Um, let's see. Is the course the four Tuesdays or are there videos? No, no, no. The course, I'm sorry. Let me just clarify that. The course is actually um videos and so when you click the link you will get um a link to the download for it and you will have the course and that will be that you do it at your leisure and whatever you watch the videos or several videos in it you watch them at your leisure and i talk about all of that so oh my god i could i don't think i could ever talk about that stuff in a in the live coaching and in, in you know in four sessions like that the, the four tuesdays are just a bonus for the people who take advantage of this week's launch and buy the course at the discounted rate, only, only those people are going to get, be in the live coaching group. And the live coaching group is literally just going to be a live Zoom call with me for Q&A that is related to the course. And it's going to be on those four Tuesdays starting on February 20th. So Sorry, I wasn't clear about that. But hi, Susan. It's great to see you. And I hope I end up seeing you on those calls. Great to see you here. Um, so yeah, thank you for that question, Susan. So anybody else kind of going once and going twice? Okay, well, thank you again so much for being here. I, I love you so much. And um, I am going to be doing um, some more Facebook Lives uh, in between now and Valentine's Day. So they will be on um, some different topics um, that have to do with miraculous relationships. So they won't all be on this topic. So I hope you can join me for those too. And I will be um, letting you know in my on my emails and in social media when they're going to be coming up. I think the next one is this coming Monday. And I want to say it's at 6 or 6.30. So. I love you so much. Mwah! Thank you so much for being here. Yay.